Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Saturday, May 16th, 2020. Going to take a fairly quick look here at what's happening with the developing storm system. Right now off the Florida coast, Invest Area 90L is what it's called at the moment. A very high chance that this will go on to develop into either a tropical storm or a subtropical storm. What is the difference? Well, we'll talk about that. Uh, the key message is real quick from the National Hurricane Center. A tropical or subtropical depression or storm is likely to form later today or tonight. Uh, regardless of development, this system will continue to bring heavy rainfall and gusty winds to portions of east central and southeastern Florida and the northwestern Bahamas. And then finally, this one down here, number three, dangerous surf conditions and rip currents are expected to spread northward during the next few days along much of the U.S. southeast and mid-Atlantic coast. Now, this one right here is, to me, the most important uh, because beaches have opened, are opening, and will open over the next few days as we deal with um, the COVID-19 situation and all the frustrations surrounding that. People have been uh, away from the beaches in a lot of locations. This is a nice weekend generally, and lots of people are headed to the coast where they can. And I'm telling you, you really, really need to pay attention to this right here. You, know, you get in that water, uh, rip currents can be deadly. So please take that uh, and heed that hazard. Okay, understand that. That's a hazard. And pay attention. And if you want to know what your local areas, your local conditions are like, National Weather Service, you just go to weather.gov, weather.gov, put in your zip code of where you are, and there will be hazardous weather information, rip current statements, anything like that will be located there. So nice infographic here from the Hurricane Center uh, about the key messages related to this system. A broad satellite perspective, here is 90L off the southeast coast. Large complex of storms moving out of Texas into the northwest Gulf of Mexico. Probably won't develop into anything, but it's interesting when we see these complexes do that. Huge area of cloudiness and showers and storms associated with the intertropical convergent zone and just general rising motion out over the southeastern Pacific, but no development is expected there over the next several days. Let's zoom in and take a look here from the Weather Nerds site. The uh, previous animation here from Tropical Tidbits. This is weathernerds.org and a nice visible satellite picture with lightning flashes overlaid. And uh, you can see our system definitely better organized than it was yesterday. Broad area of turning and low pressure out here. Uh, heavily weighted on the east side. And this is what I was talking about when I was talking about a tropical versus subtropical. These types of systems these subtropical kind of hybrid mixes. It's early, you know, we're not even in the hurricane season yet. And so all the dynamics involved to get a well bundled tropical storm where the wind is concentrated near the center and other factors, those are just not there yet. So you get these sort of hybrid systems that are spread out. Most of the weather is on the Eastern side. That being said, they can still cause problems. You know, the rip currents that I talked about all up and down the coast here, that could be an issue. And then if you're out in the water on a boat uh, and you get into one of these thunderstorms or gusty wind shower events, one of these bands comes over you, that can cause problems as well. But it's not a hurricane. It's not a tropical storm, but it's a big enough weather system that we need to realize that and you know, take precautions if you're out on the waterways, again, especially emphasizing the fact that a lot of us have been kept away from the beaches and a lot of people are heading out there. And that's where I think the biggest threat lies here is those rip currents. Um, another way to look at this is from the vorticity signature. And you can see right here, again, it's kind of elongated and spread out. And what we're going to look for over the coming days, the next couple of days, is does this become more circular? through here. And if it does, that'll indicate to me that it is becoming better organized and more focused. Again, right now, it's kind of a uh, blob, if you will. It's elongated, but it's trying. It's definitely making progress. And for mid-May, you know, you could do a lot worse than what we're seeing here. 
down in this part of the world and luckily though it's not august or september so it's not going to have a chance to strengthen very much in terms of wind or other impacts but remember i'll emphasize again it is about the impacts and the impacts in this situation i think the the one that has the most uh concern for me are those rip currents um this is from mike adcock i follow him on twitter international aviation meteorologist this guy knows what he's talking about and he was tweeting this about recon going in and checking out what's going on with 90l that they are finding a fairly weak system overall near gale force winds and there's the key there these subtropical storms not that this is one of those yet but this is this sort of proves my point the winds are well removed to the north of the system in a line of convection you know so it's still quite disorganized however uh and this is just something that he picked up on this is sort of what us weather geeks follow the atcf um uh what is that the automatic tropical cyclone file or something i forget what that means but this is a way for us to keep up with, with what's going on and when when one of these invest areas disappears out of the atcf sector of the uh the web server system usually it means it's going to get an upgrade but whatever that's it doesn't matter we'll see i just thought that was an interesting tidbit that uh that he put in there that mike added that right there so we'll see again the bottom line the main takeaway yeah you know light winds overall not a real big deal uh in terms of major impacts looking at the modeling real quick the uh track guidance overnight generally speaking the envelope of where this could go mostly focused on close to the north carolina outer banks or just offshore and that has implications beyond the obvious in terms of impacts it also means because the gulf stream runs roughly right up through this area and i'm just approximating it there if it's closer to the gulf stream where the water temperatures are near 80 degrees this could have a little bit more fuel to work with for what it's worth so here's the gfs uh the just one of many models this is the 6z run from overnight hours and i'll just kind of move this out into time and you know it doesn't look very threatening but right there as it comes up towards north carolina it's again probably feeling that gulf stream uh for an added boost of fuel maybe the atmosphere is giving it some kick that's another clue about these sort of subtropical systems it's not all latent heat there's some atmospheric processes involved as well but what's curious about this this is monday morning now this is monday afternoon it does try to sort of strengthen it if you will it becomes better organized as a better way to put it because i don't want to alarm people unnecessarily when i say strengthen it's still going to be a weak wind system you know 35 45 miles per hour something like that you know heavy rain bands from time to time <clears throat> some coastal impacts with some water rises but nothing to get too worried about that being said the outer banks dare county is opening up to the public today for the first time in i don't know 70 days or something and people are heading down there and this is not the opportune time at all to be having something like this come along and as you see the gfs brings it on up into the mid-atlantic states uh to southern new jersey what is that uh by 72 hours on tuesday so let's watch how this plays out you see it's just barely showing up at all and then right there those last few frames it tries to strengthen a little bit better a little bit more and that'll be something to watch over the next few days but i wouldn't get too concerned about it if you need the rain this will bring it again my main emphasis if you're going to be at the beach be mindful of rip currents over the next few days those are deadly they are they kill people and if you're not used to it it could really be a problem so that's what i'm going to hype up about this is the rip current threat that's the main problem i want to keep you guys alive and that's how we do it is by making you aware of the hazards and there are always hazards no matter how quote weak a system is or whatever we call it subtropical or tropical rip currents do not care about what we label the storm all right that is it from me for now i'll post additional updates 
from time to time on my social media here, mainly on Twitter. You can follow me at Hurricane Track, and uh, we'll see what happens, and I'll have another full video discussion for you tomorrow morning. As always, thank you for tuning in. I am Mark Stadith, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have more for you over the weekend.